Rick Gilmore. The old thing was run, Jesse, run. Yeah. The new one is pull out, Jesse, pull out. On News Radio WTAM 1100. Well, well. Before I get to the phones, there's something else I wanted to discuss as well. Throw into the mix. 578-1100 in the classic 216 area code. Isn't tonight the Jessica Lynch movie? I believe it is. I don't know. Yes! I don't know what channel. Ow! That was loud, mate. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what channel it's on, and I don't care because I'm working, and I'll miss it anyway. But uh, it was just. How can I put this without just putting it? They say she may have been raped. Well, friend of the program, Norm Ezzy from We the People, told me months and months and months ago that the reason that they break some 19-year-old girl's back and maybe her elbows and her ankles or her knees is so that they, and send the children out of the room for this little comment, it's not, it's not dirty or anything, but it's rather graphic. So that they can repeatedly gang rape the little 19-year-old American girl. Now, I've heard people say, uh, what, and we, we shouldn't, I don't know, I'm not going to mention the name, I'll just, you, you can figure out from the voice. Uh, what, and we, and we shouldn't have gone in there. Well, we're talking about aberrant human behavior. We're talking about aberrant human behavior that would have soldiers on the, you know, playing for the opposing team gang rape a 19-year-old from the other side. Now, how are we going to fix that? Are we going to fix that with dun -dun -dun -dun, democracy? You're talking about animals, people that would do something like that. Would they do it to their own? I mean, what, what, what are we going to fix? Are, are we, are we, I, a friend of mine's a, a grumpy old Vietnam vet. I don't know when he was there, but he's 62. So do the math. And he says, you know, in the beginning I thought we should have gone to Iraq, and now I don't think we should have. Well, I've been saying from the beginning that I did not think we should have. This is only, consider this, this is only November 9th. Do you know how many soldiers we've lost in Iraq this month? Do you have a guess? It's only nine days. Do you have a guess? Thirty-six. In the first nine days of November. And the grumpy old Vietnam vet said to me, every time an American soldier dies, it's a travesty. I said, I agree. He said, that, and I hate to say it, but the hell with those other people. Screw them. Every time an American soldier dies, it's a tragedy, it's a travesty. I said, I agree. 100%. Now, someone was calling to tell me that Veterans Day is Tuesday. It's observed tomorrow. Does that clear that up for you a little bit? And I will stand by my opinion that I've had, and I think, Nate, you can back that up. You've been producing this program for a while. Have not I been saying since the beginning of the war that we should not be there? Yep. Have I wavered at all from that? Not a bit. Have I, did I not say that when we, when we went to Afghanistan, I'd had no problem with that? Nope. Had no problem at all if we were looking for Osama bin Laden and trying to root out terrorists. But I'm not the only person now, and in fact, the grumpy Vietnam vet even said, you know, I didn't used to think that there were other reasons why we went in there than why we went in there. Like oil, like wedging ourselves into the Middle East, that sort of thing. Now, some folks say, oh, the troops will be out fairly soon. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not certain of that. Other folks from our government say 10 to 15 years. Now they're calling up 40,000 reservists. Get ready. Get ready. We may need you. Now, I'm not going to sit and call it a Vietnam, because it's not. But I don't know as if we're exactly accomplishing everything we wanted to. I know, it just takes time, right? It just takes time. 36 soldiers, and it's only nine days into November? And that's just this month? We've lost more since the war ended. And, of course, the war had to end, right? The war had to be at least proclaimed to come to an end within, what is it, 60 days? Because we did not officially, it was an illegal, unjust war to begin with. Because the only way we're supposed to proclaim war on somebody is if they had 
some armed aggression against us that we could prove. You know, like Japan and Pearl Harbor. But what was, there was no correlation, and there still is no correlation, between Saddam Hussein and 9-11, and there are still no weapons of mass destruction. And yet, 69% of Americans think it was a good idea that we went to Iraq. And when 9-11 happened, uh, I, you know what, I'll, I, I'll repeat it for you, and then I'll repeat it again. Repetition is the mother of all talk radio. Repetition is the mother of all talk radio. Repetition is, of course, the mother of all talk radio. 3% of people thought there was a correlation when 9-11 happened to Saddam Hussein. 3%. Whereas 53% thought there was a correlation when the war started on March 18th. So go figure. No, we don't have a propaganda machine in this country. No, we, we don't. We don't. Harumph, we don't play that way. Harumph, harumph, harumph. We do play that way. I heard something very interesting on a public radio station. They were phone conversations that were taped from JFK and LBJ and Nixon. And it was anything and everything. Nixon was so wired, he'd walk into a room and it'd start taping. Literally. They had it set up where if he walked into the room, it'd start taping. And some of the tapes, after he got rid of Ehrlichman and Haldeman... He called, I think it was Ehrlich when he called, and he was clearly drunk. Oh, I love you. Um, I think it was Haldeman. Bob, oh, I want to get them bastards. You know, you're used to hearing Nixon with that, you know. And we, I bought my wife a nice uh, Republican cloth coat. And we did get a gift of a little black and white dog named Checkers. And I don't care what anybody says. We're going to eat it. I mean, keep it. Not that drunken Nixon riding around on his yacht on the Potomac with a glass of gin in his hand. Taping everything. What a swine. He truly was a swine. LBJ, that was another one. He's, he's talking to the president of Farrah Jeans. Farrah, Farrah Slacks. He says, can you, can, can you get me that next pair? About a half inch bigger in the waist. And, you know, can you make it a little bigger down there in the crotch? Because it cuts my nuts like riding a wire fence. <laughs> he was kind of a swine, too. JFK seemed like an honest, earnest kind of guy who was not always in command. He had tried to call some people and get some things done. And you know, the, re the real swine was Kissinger. And here, Kissinger was one of these Weasley kind of guys that would kiss your fanny on the phone and then do whatever he wanted to do. So he kind of had Nixon wrapped around his little finger. Does our government do things like that? I mean, think about it. Think about our current, our current president. Now, if you think of the swine-like qualities of, of Richard Nixon and the rather pig-like qualities of LBJ, but they were seasoned pros at being pigs and swine. And they were probably just a little bit smarter when it came to politics than the guy we got in now. And I suppose it's another issue entirely, but just some things I just want to get off my chest. I mean, uh, is Howard Dean really a viable candidate for president for, from the Democratic Party? The Democrats are not going to be able to beat George W. Bush if they cannot come up with a candidate and that doesn't stick his foot in his mouth and say, I, want, I even want the voters from the guys with the Confederate flags on their pickup trucks. He said that. Are these people that moronic? Do they have to have every word written for them? Can, can I write in Tony Blair? I mean, you know, <laughs> do we have to go cross the briny to find somebody smart enough to truly be our president? Unbelievable. Tom, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. Evening. Um, my name's Tom. I'm traveling back from Dayton, and uh, I just kind of want to agree with you on a couple points and disagree with you about the city of Cleveland. Uh, my wife and I are both from Cleveland, and we moved to Dayton. And uh, things are falling apart all over the place, and I think a lot of people uh, see some of the potential coming back to the city of Cleveland. We have a lot of young professional friends who live in Philadelphia, uh, Columbus, and Cincinnati, and they're all trying to come back to the Cleveland area. But uh, to illustrate a point about one of the problems with the city of Cleveland, I had a job interview in February with the uh, city of Cleveland DMS. 
and uh, they wanted to offer me twenty six thousand dollars, and I was would have to be forced to live in the city. I'm a four year college graduate. I graduated from UD. Uh, that's how I came to Dayton. Um, and I think that's just when they're they're the caliber of person they're trying to get to work for the city. What does it say about the caliber of people trying to work in the city outside of the city government? And uh, I just wanted to highlight that point. All right. Well, you know. The city of Cleveland, to me, has a lot of problems that are going to take a long, long time to fix. And uh, I'm, I'm the guy that, how long have I been saying, I'm not leaving Cleveland? I'm not leaving. I've said it for years. I, I know. Said, years. I said, I'm not leaving. I bought a house in the city of Cleveland, specifically so that I could sit and bitch and moan about the city of Cleveland. Now, I'm not living out in some suburb or something like that. I'm living in the inner city of Cleveland. And uh, I see a few phone callers about that. That's fine. You want to call about Jessica Lynch? That's fine. You want to call about anything else? That's fine. But the city of Cleveland has got to turn some kind of corner. And I don't see it happening under Ladybug Jane. Pop, shoot, pop, pop, pop. Rick Gilmore. I have never cheated on a woman ever, 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 ever. ever. Ever on News Radio WTAM 1100. Oh, I certainly do love the big one. Oh, glad to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Next hour, I got a great little story for you. I pulled from the Oregonian about a, a man who pled guilty to killing his friend who served him urine in a beer can. He deserved to die. Well, wait till you get the details of it. Sheesh. Who boy? That's all I can say. Kevin, talk to me. What do you mean? What do you mean what? Boy, you're making me laugh. I'm sitting in my car. <laughs> Anyhow, the city of Cleveland. Yeah. You know. I hate to go off the. Uh, oh no, that's fine. This topic. That's fine. But uh, you know what? The city of Cleveland. One of the biggest problems I have with Jane Campbell and the ex mayor White is I've been all over the place, uh, statewide, out of the country. We have a world-class airport with garbage on the floor. They don't pick up. They're closed down too early. They want to solicit your business. They don't seem to make anything work properly. And they just keep want, wanting to take your money from you. It's, it's, uh, it's embarrassing. San Diego, L.A., even Miami. Uh, granted, you got a lot of people sleeping on the floors and whatnot, but uh, Cleveland's a world-class airport, and it, it's just uh, the city. If they want to expand, they want to make things look good. Why would they have an airport after eight o'clock at night that has garbage on the floors and you can't get any service? I don't know. I don't fly, so I don't know. I mean, when I was there, it seemed. And that's been a couple of years ago. We were seeing some people off. It seemed clean enough to me. But don't dare try to get something to eat there. Don't dare order a beer there. You know, you may have to take out a bank loan for a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah, that'd be six fifty. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, it was very, to me, it seemed like very expensive. Luckily, I wasn't buying. Found somebody's wallet on the floor, and you know, no, I'm kidding you. Tomorrow, Roger Hedgecock fills in for Rush. <laughs> he said, Roger. Here the EIB network, you know, weekdays from noon until 3 here. Pre-trib on the big one, News Radio, WTAM 1100. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3's Betsy Kling, a lovely woman. Tonight, going to clear out and go down into the mid-20s. Mid-20s. I would really prefer a cup of cocoa. Well, you may need cocoa. This weather keeps up. <laughs> Don't give me that look, Nate. You're getting this look from the other room. I can't read you at all. I have no idea what the look is. I hate that drop. Oh, I'm sorry. I would really prefer a cup of... Wow. And off... Ah. There it went. Off into the night. Tomorrow, Veterans Day observed. Cloudy, high of 50. Tuesday, Veterans Day, real day. Uh, gonna rain mid 50s. And Wednesday, more rain. And it's gonna snow by nighttime. I was out in the yard yesterday, and there were flakes of flying. Nothing landed, but uh, currently 36 degrees in Cleveland. 36 degrees. Ken, talk to me. 
Hey, Gilly, it's Ken out in Chagrin Falls. Yes, sir. Question, if you had had children, remained married and had children, how, how would you justify compromising their future by keeping them in explicitly your neighborhood? Because my next door neighbors are your friends and I've debated this with them many times. And, uh, you know, how, how would you justify forcing them to go to the Cleveland school? Well, you know, I've said for a long time, and I'll stand by it, I said that most of the people that live in, in the, the Tremont area that uh, have been there a long time and have kids that go to Cleveland schools probably can't, cannot afford to move to someplace else. That's why they're there. They're there because they like the area, but it's, yeah, I mean, if I had kids, I think I'd be forced to move. The Cleveland schools are just not someplace I'd want to send my kids. Yeah, you can't build a community around it. And, and unfortunately, as your neighbors have pointed out, until people are willing to sacrifice and, and you know, make it a better place, and there's not enough people that will do that. You know, frankly, I would never do it. Um, you know, it, it can't really get better. And, and in fact, you know, there's the more gifted of the two children, you know, got a scholarship and goes out to a private school in Lake County because they couldn't, Cleveland schools couldn't provide for that child. Yeah, it's a real shame that I thought, that, you know, 20 years ago, or t more than 20 years ago, isn't it, that the, uh, 30 years ago, the Ohio lottery was going to fix all the schools in the state. And I don't see as if it's done squat. I'm sure the directors of the Ohio lottery, the people that do the advertising, the lawyers, and by the way, the, the, the whole lawyer in New York, you know, law firm in New York deal, out, out there, they're so sleazy and slimy that they're savvy enough to approach metropolitan areas and say, hey, you probably have 10-year-old tickets. We'll go after those people for you. You don't have to do a thing. Just give us 60%. Well, don't you think that the city of Cleveland, there would be somebody here that would have the insight to say, well, thank you very much for the phone call. We'll think about it. And then get a hold of a law firm in Cleveland and say, well, here, we got, a, we got an offer from New York. You guys want the business here? You'd think they would try to do that to develop it. But then again... <laughs> Does anyone want to encourage the spread of slime lawyer ethic from New York City to Cleveland if it hasn't hit here yet? <laughs> well, Ken, I got to run, but uh, uh, I, I, it's strictly, it, it has nothing to do with slime lawyer ethics. It's strictly to do with keep the business here in Cleveland. Why farm it out to somebody in New York? I'd rather give some, if the lawyer wants 60%. Give the lawyer 60%, just like you have to give the firm in New York, but give it to a lawyer in Cleveland. Give it, keep the money here, because they're going to spend the money here. These jackasses in New York are going to spend the money in New York. They're not going to come to Cleveland on vacation. What are you, nuts? More of the phone calls, more of the program. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend, and this is Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. Oh. The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Oh, dear God in heaven, what am I going to do? Now it's 35 degrees. I only dressed for 36. I would really prefer a cup of cocoa. If you're driving across the 40 bridge right now, keep both hands on the wheel. Right, you're in for a thrill ride. How about that? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Giant Eagle's taking double coupons. Call me Captain Clippy. That's not my name. Great big voice, man. The Rick Gilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. I saw that. Wahoo! I'm taking the coupon section home with me. I'm a boy on a budget, you know. I remind you, if you're elderly and you're well-to-do and you're not feeling so good and you got nobody to leave your money to, don't leave it to your cat. Remember who entertained you in your twilight years. Leave it to me. I'll put it to good use. I need, need a new roof. Need some carpet. Need, need a 30-inch door. Got to get me up. I'm putting, move my bedroom out of the, out of the attic and put it downstairs because I don't heat the attic and I'm tired of sleeping with a space heater or crashing on the couch. And got, a, got a new couch, gift from my mom. She got new furniture, gave me her old couch. It was like new. Got rid of my old couch and, you know, the, I tried sleeping on the new couch and you know how you sleep on a couch and you get it all crushed in good so you can just flop right in. Then you get on a new couch and you keep thinking you're going to roll off. Because it doesn't have a trench in it yet. And then I thought, well, that seems like an awful shame to ruin a nice couch. Well, had a few things on the table from last hour. Iraq. Should we be there? I still say no. Jessica Lynch. Is she a hero? Our cyber vote at WTAM.com. 31% of you say yes. That's a larger issue I didn't get into, is women in combat. Should women be in combat? That was Rick Abel's only comment when Trevisano brought up that story about perhaps she was raped. 
Oh, undoubtedly, she'll be seeing a brain plumber for life. That's why she's been in the hospital forever and ever and ever and ever. It wasn't to heal the, the scars and wounds of the physical duress that she had handled. It's the mental scars that she'll be carrying for the rest of her born days. That, that's, and it, it, democracy will fix that. There won't be any more animals over there. Well, the thing is, they're probably a lot more tempted to gang rape a 19-year-old pretty American girl in a wartime scenario than they would be some 19-year-old dude. Right? So my idea is that yeah, keep, the, keep the ladies out of combat. They wanted the right to vote. They got it. They wanted the right to wear pants. They got it. They wanted the right to wear one of my patented pairs of French cut three-legged jeans. They don't got it. But they should not be in combat. And that's that. Keep the fairer sex out of... The, what's this? So nobody, somebody knows where I can get cheap windows. Uh, <laughs> this is, Hi, welcome to Home Improvement Show. I'm Rick Gilmar. Today we'll be talking about how to improve an 1870 brick house. Where I can sit in my living room. I, I, honestly, I can sit in my living room and feel a breeze from the single-pane windows. I feel a breeze. And I, how do you, how, can you insulate a, a true brick house? You know, a real brick house, not a, not a, not a brick house over a frame. It's true brick. So then they put the plaster and lath and everything right up against the brick. Well, where do you put the insulation? Maybe, maybe you can, you can get it sided or something. It broke ceiling joists last, last winter from the weight of the snow, from, from the weight of the roof. And I'll tell you, old houses... I watched The Money Pit. That's a stinky movie. It's just a, a cheesy remake of a truly good movie. If you ever saw The Money Pit or you live in an old house and you want to see a truly excellent movie about that, go to your local video store and rent Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House with Cary Grant and Melvin Douglas and some chick whose name escapes me right now who was really famous, Myrna Loy maybe or somebody. Uh, I don't know who played his wife, but anyway... That's, that's a good movie. But no, you know, everybody, Nate's going, Myrna who? Although we are looking up to see if... Uh, he mentioned this, Dom DeLuise was on Larry King talking about Dean Martin, so we're trying to see if today is the anniversary of Dean Martin's death. Or maybe his birth, or something. We'll find it. Usually they just give you the, you know, the... Just give you the... The years, they don't give you anything like that. And we talked about parking tickets and why the city of Cleveland has to farm... The fact that we got outstanding tickets out to, to some law firm in, in New Jersey is beyond me. I don't know. Scott, you're on the air. Yeah, I got a kind of a complex question, Gilly. I don't know if you're going to be able to help me on this or not. I was down in Springfield, Ohio, today, and gas was at $1.33. In fact, there was a speedway that had it at $1.31. I just went by up around University Heights, uh, the corner of Cedar and Green, gas was a dollar fifty-eight. I'm talking unleaded regular now. Right. How can there be such a price disparity on gas? Interesting you mentioned that because uh, gas at West Fourteenth and Clark is now down to I think a dollar thirty-three, something like that. And then if you drive out to the suburbs, you know, you go out to Fairview or you go come out here to Independence or something, and then it's fifteen cents more a gallon. I mean, that's also, why is it, I mean, I think the answer is probably obvious, that the people in that area cannot support that type of, um, the, the competition's three gas stations on three corners. And the people that live in that area, a lot of them can't afford to spend $1.58 a gallon, whereas I guess if you live in Strongsville, you can. Why does the price of gas go up 15 cents on Friday? Well, because people are going to be out traveling around on the weekends. And it's just gouging is all it is. I don't know. I sometimes wonder about all these wonderful, bright politicians, uh, especially Tax and Taft and everything. You mean um, Bob the Jellyfish Taft, the tool of King George V? Well, let me see. It's, uh, you know, Tax and Taft, uh, you know, at least a, 
I, I voted for the idiot, and I guess the thing that makes me mad is, uh, at least if I would have voted for Tim Hagen, I would have known I would gotten a tax and spend person. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, he was called that for years. Yeah, well, man, I never saw a tax he didn't love. I guess the big question I have is, you know, this state is so quick to, you know, if you owe them two cents, they're willing to stick the uh, wild Dobermans out to tear you apart, especially... Uh, Betty Montgomery, uh, there was a situation I had where uh, there was some money owed, and uh, if she could have lynched me, she probably would have. She got her money and everything, but, you know, what is the state doing? I mean, they talked at one point, I remember several years ago, about how in the inner city they were paying more for gasoline than the suburbs were. Um, I don't know. It's all confusing to me. I, I look at any of these companies, these oil companies, and think, you know what, I'm, I'm just getting gouged no matter what. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, for years, they raised the price of gas on Fridays, and then it comes back down, and for, it's always been that way with the price. When I, when I lived in Strongsville, if you wanted to go out and, say, buy a 12-pack of beer, well, you had your choice of Dairy Mart or Dairy Mart, or, or maybe Dairy Mart. Now, I'm talking something cheap like, uh, wow, Dean Martin died on Christmas Day. Is that right? Christmas Day, 1995. He's in the same company with W.C. Fields, died Christmas Day, 1946. So you, say you go buy a 12-pack of natural light, something that you could buy at that time in any store for about $4.88. But no, at the big DM, which seemed to have, you are a captive audience in Strongsville, no, it was almost six bucks. Why? I guess because they can. And I'd drive out Sprague Road into the convenience store out there and buy it for four eighty-eight. Not because I didn't have the six bucks. I didn't like the idea of being gouged. And a couple, three times of that, I start feeling like I have to go home and take a shower or something. There's a store in my neighborhood, and I won't name it. It's a little mom and pop. I've gone in there, say, for example... Good example, again, a 12-pack of beer. And it's 590... How'd that work? No, it was 530 or something like that, and I give him six bucks and he gives me a dime back. Now, I'm looking right at the register on the other side. You know, you can see it. It points right towards you. It was 530 or 540, whatever. He's ripping me off for 50, 60 cents, whatever the exact... Maybe it was 540 and he gave me a dime back. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to say nothing. Because maybe it's an honest mistake. So I went back a couple weeks later, the same thing. The same guy gives me a dime back. Now, does he think that people that live in that neighborhood that generally shop there to buy beer are people that live in that neighborhood? Maybe they, you know, maybe what, they're not smart enough to add? I mean, for, so I went back a third time just to see he did it again. I will never shop there again, ever. I'd walk a mile down the road instead of going two blocks to that store. Three times in a row, now it's general principle, right? Now I'm done. That's it. I'm done. See, if, I have a theory that if, if uh, no one's ever lied to me, they're not a liar. You lie to me once, I think, eh, maybe this guy's prone to telling a tall tale once in a while. But you lie to me three different times, you're nothing but a liar. And if somebody steals from you three different times, they're nothing but a thief. Real simple, isn't it? Real simple. Rules for, rules for life. Rules to live by. Somebody rips you off three times, they'll rip you off 30 times. If they lied to you three different times, they'll lie to you 3,000 times. What's the difference once they got past that threshold of one? Well, the way I look at it is three strikes and you're out, right? So you get to that threshold of three. Now I'm like, no, 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 no. Now you don't believe anything they say ever and they could come to you crying on their bloodied knees and tell you the story and tale of woe. And old Taffy Pockets here ain't going to give you a dime because I figure you're probably fibbing and you're going to buy rock crystal cocaine or something like that. Those are the, those are the worst ones. Drug addicts, they'll not only lie to you, they'll rob you blind too. They got the double whammy going. They got past the threshold of lying. Now, okay, well, if they can get past the threshold of stealing, oh, well, lying is a minor offense. Right? Oh, well, I lied, so what? But I got the money. I got the money. 
Uh, I can go buy rocks, uh, crystal cocaine, and, and get some chore boy and a glass pipe. All right, great. Get out of my life. Hit the road, you know, that sort of thing. Yes, producer Nate, you're raising your hand. Do you have to go to the bathroom? Do you need a hall pass? How did you get here from Jessica Lynch? Um, is that what I started on? You started talking about Jessica Lynch. Women in combat. Yeah, then you went there, and then you went to insulating your house, and then you went to windows. It's, it's a rich and varied program. I'm confused. Well, the moral of the story is... <laughs> That I tried to get Jessica Lynch to pick up a 12-pack and come over and insulate my house. And she said no. Because she... See, it all ties in. Got it. Okay. Right. Because she couldn't afford to buy gasoline. Because it was too expensive in her area. No, she wasn't... No, I, I, I don't know how to weave that in. She, she was offered cocaine along the way by an Iraqi that had emigrated here to open a store to rip people off. <laughs> <laughs> when I try to buy cheap beer. Now I have to weave in Carl Monday <laughs> and the three fat black Mexican lesbians stuck in a pay toilet and one of them just ate a can of beans. Now if I can do that, then that'll be complete. Triple Apple Forecast from TV3 Meteorologist Betsy Kling. <laughs> You'll, you, you'll miss me when you're gone, won't you? Oh, yeah! <laughs> Tonight, clear mid-20s. Tomorrow, Veterans Day, observed. Cloudy, high of 50. High of 50, get out there and rake the rest of them leaves up. Currently, 36 degrees in Cleveland, 36. Tomorrow morning on Wills and Coleman in the morning, get your best Browns coverage with Butch Davis, Doug Deacon, Kelly Holcomb, Kevin Johnson. Wake up informed, would you? Don't be a dumb dumb. Weekdays, 5 until 9 here on News Radio. WTAM. 1100. Larry, you're on the air. Oh, good evening, my king. Oh, well, hey, you hey, know. Dude, I've been out of state for a while, and it is so good to hear you. It's so good to hear Cleveland Radio, man. Well, what state were you in? I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was in Texas. Man, dude, the radio down there sucks. Well, you know. The weather was good. I've driven around the country, and I've heard this comment from, uh, from uh, someone who's higher up in radio than I am, and I'll just leave it at that. And they said, you know, there's a lot of people on the radio when you drive around the country that have no business being on the air. Oh. And I found that out. I drove around, and uh, there was only one guy that I found that was, and I can't remember his name, Phil, somebody or other, Phil, Phil, uh, he works for Clear Channel, he interviews himself, he'll, he'll have him on one line on the phone, and then him on the other, no, Phil Hiller, Phil Hillick, Phil Hiller. I, I can't remember his name. Some, but some caller would remember, except that they wouldn't be able to get through unless you call 578-1111 in the classic 216 area code. But uh, anyway, that guy's really talented. However, there were a lot of other people, and I thought, how did, how did they get that job? Dude, when I was going through Texas and at the no rock and roll, Texas, country music, and some talk shows, man, I, they were so boring. But however... I was staying at this place, and you know what we were watching on TV? Used cars. Oh, really? Yeah, it was, if, if, and I got homesick. Well, the problem with used cars on TV is they're going to cut out all the funny stuff. because well, it was on tape. We were, oh. Uh, I had to go. All right. I had to, I had to spend the night at a friend's house, and we, he says, hey, man, let's watch. I, want, I said, used car. Oh, cool, man. We got blast. It was good night. Nah, and I had to have Jim turn the fire hose on him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to go through scenes from the film or I'd but lose that was, my... That job. was so cool. But, and I told, my, I told my buddy, he says, man, dude, I got to get home, man. This is, I'm getting homesick, man. Well, here you are, and it's... Uh, yeah, it's no place like home, dude. 35 degrees. Yeah, where I was, it was beautiful. Well, not here. Yeah, I was, I was down, oh, it was beautiful. I was in Tucson and stuff. It was beautiful, man. Did you see a UFO while you were out west? I like, didn't see no UFO, man. Yeah, see, everybody goes out west and then comes back and says they saw a UFO. Dude, we I'm thinking to, it's the peyote. Nah, I just, nah, we, I was hired in a kite a few days, but I didn't uh, see nothing like that, man. It was, I, seen, I met a lot of good people. Drunk a lot of good Lone Star beer and oh, others. That reminds me, I was going to read the story about the guy who a uh, man pleads guilty to friend killing him who served him urine in a beer can. You want to hear it? Yeah. A uh, 46-year-old member of the uh, Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation pled guilty to unintentionally killing his friend. The two were among a group of people riding in a van, drinking on the Indian Reservation on July 29th. And this one guy, David Shippentower, was very drunk 
after drinking about a dozen 24-ounce beers. Now, that's a whole lot of suds, don't you think, Larry? Well, I'll tell you what. I was, where I was at one night, me and my buddy, I think we drank about two cases of beer between us. I drank a case myself. I, I got, we drank all night long. Schippentower uh, said his, uh, 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 asked his buddy, uh, that guy's Leonard Strong. He asked uh, Strong to hand him another beer. According to the witnesses, the can Strong handed Schippentower contained urine. After tasting it, Schippentower punched Strong in the eye and nose, and the first blow broke Strong's glasses. Well, they must have been drunk. You never had a man with glasses. The others in the van told police they then restrained him. Uh, Strong eventually got out of the van and was going to fend for himself, and then he sat there for about three hours. Temperatures went up to about 100 degrees, and a police officer found Strong, who was unconscious. He was alive. Uh, autopsy found he'd had a head injuries. Contributing was the bleeding in his brain from very thin blood because he uh, was unable to clot because he had a cirrhotic liver. His blood alcohol level was 0.34. Uh, Schippentower said he didn't mean to do it, but, uh, you know, he's getting sentenced anyway. But I, Well, you don't go handing people a bottle of wee-wee and throw it on the field. No, I used to, no, that's right, dude. That's what I used to do, and I almost got in trouble for that. Yeah, you were at the, uh, the bottle-throwing event at Brown Stadium. Yeah, I... I gave my tickets. Man, I'm so disappointed. Yeah, and, and then you said that Clevelanders don't waste good beer. No, well, no. we were drinking, I was drinking draft. I love draft beer. I'll tell you what, I'll drink draft beer over bottle beer, but... Me too, yeah. I don't know, you get a taste for it uh, after a while, and then you just don't want a beer in a can. I was drinking uh, 23 ounces of frosted mugs. Of uh, We were drinking San Miguel, or Dos Equis. Uh, you're drinking that Mexican pee water. Well, I know, but they were, believe it or not, I was in a place, dude, they were out of bud. They had, they were out of bud, and they had a few other things around. They had, like, well, I was, oh, I see, out in the great southwest. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't going to drink, like, I don't like Coors. I ain't going to drink Coors. Well, if you're in Texas, drink Steel Reserve 211. Lone uh, Star, I was drinking Lone Star. Or Pearl. Pearls, all oh, Pearls is good beer. Yeah, that's Texan, you know, Texas beer, and I'm sure they didn't run out of, nobody ever runs out of Pearl in Texas, do no, they? No, I never had Pearl on draft. It was weird. It oh. was good, though. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, those Mexican beers, I don't like beers that you have to put something in to make no. them taste good. Right, I mean, I, I, I drank so much beer that night, I was disappointed because I, I like, uh, I like Michelob, and I like Miller and stuff like that. And See, putting a lime in a beer, to me, is like having to put butter and, and brown sugar on a sweet potato to make it any good. Oh, you, know I mean, you wouldn't want to eat the sweet potato plain, would you? So then that means it's no good to start with. You know, I'll tell you what was weird is when we were cruising different states, there was no Canadian beer whatsoever any places we stopped. Oh, I dumped that because that was... Uh, I dumped it too, Nate. <laughs> you dumped and I dumped. Yeah, you know, just to inform the audience, it was, it was in poor taste, what, what the gentleman said. It wasn't necessarily dirty, it was just in poor taste. And Larry, normally when he leaves the program, he says, have a good one, and I say, I already do. Laura, you're on the big one. Hi, I just wanted to respond to your commentary about convenience stores. Right. And I actually own a convenience store. It's not part of a chain. It's an independent store. And it is a general commentary for independent store owners, which there are fewer and fewer. Um, we don't get the volume discounts chains like Dairy Mart and the other places do. And so we as independent store owners have to charge more in order to uh, even make a, a minimal profit. And uh, sadly enough, as a, as, a, as a general commentary, what you're finding, is, is not just with that business but all others, is that corporate corporations are, are squeezing out the independent uh, business owners, self-employed, and it's kind of the foundation of America, yet we're getting squeezed out as independent store owners. So I just, I just wanted to make that commentary to you because as an independent store owner, I have to charge more. All right, 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 gotta go, gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, all right, all right, I gotta go, I gotta go, all right, I gotta go, all right, I gotta go, I gotta go, all right, all right, I gotta go. Wow. Glad I'm not married to her. I'd have to wear earplugs. I understand your point, but come up for air. More of your phone calls and more of the program. These important words and coverage of what in the world's happening. I'm Rick Gilmore, the obnoxious man who thinks a lot, but, you know, you're thinking man's friend. On Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. Rick Gilmore.
Gilmore. Okay, so what am I guilty? What am I guilty? What am I? 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 What am I guilty of sinning? On news radio. You know what it is? Maybe CNN just found out. Uh, Dean Martin died. Well, he died in 1995. Hey, CNN, I have a news flash for you. Elvis has left the building. And the mortal coil. Now, if Dean Martin died on Christmas Day, why the big tribute on November 9th? I don't get it. Rick DeMarco, you're on the air. Hey, Mr. Gilmore, long yeah. time no speak. Yeah. How you been? Oh, splendiferous. Uh... Sorry I couldn't make it to the uh, the comedy. I, we had a little uh, miscommunication there. I was tentative, and you guys thought I was positive, so I give you my, my regrets and my apologies for that. Yeah, there was a little uh, comedy uh, contest, and I was a judge, and uh, it turned out to be uh, kind of smaller than we thought. It was late turnout. Hey, I wanted to give you a... Uh little heads up on a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the eve of the Marine Corps birthday, so I want to say happy birthday to the uh, former Marines out there and current Marines and future Marines. And uh, let everyone know that uh, I'm not affiliated with this by any, any stretch of the imagination, but the uh, area Golden uh, Corral restaurants, I believe they are. Yeah. Uh, they are providing free, uh, they've done it for a few years. They're providing free meals for uh, any person that served in the armed forces. All you have to do is uh, come in and uh, show some proof. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's on the honor system, actually. What the. Um, there are the Golden Corral restaurants. Well, no, I mean, what, what day is the Marine Corps birthday? Exactly? That's tomorrow, November 10th. Oh, okay. November 10th, and the uh, Golden Corral will be providing. Uh, meals for any veteran from any branch of the service, rever reserves or National Guard included. Uh, and this is from 5 to 9 tomorrow. Uh, veterans Day is, uh, as you know, is a Tuesday. Right. Uh, Congressman La Tourette, uh has a, a, a forum uh, in East Lake. if anyone's interested in going. That's on uh, uh, Tuesday morning. I think it's uh, 9, between 9 and 10, 10 a.m. Uh, other than that, uh, that's really basically what I call, just to check in with you and, uh, you know, uh, just give you a little bit of an update on that. All right. Uh, maybe a few comments on... Uh, we were talking about uh, women in combat, Jessica Lynch, etc. Yes, et yes. You know, uh, philosophically, I don't think women should be in combat. I know from experience that they can fight just as hard as a man can. Well, you know, uh, we gave them the right to vote, and they've been yapping ever since. Yeah, but I think, uh, you know... You know, this feminization of the military is, is going to be a problem. You know, this Lieutenant Colonel West, I, I don't know if you're familiar with his story. He's the uh, Lieutenant Colonel that uh, fired his pistol a couple times to scare this Iraqi into divulging information that he had that averted a, uh, an imminent ambush and thereby saved the lives of his men, uh, who, who subsequently they court, they're trying to court-martial, which I think is totally ludicrous. For, he's a court-martial him for scaring someone. Yeah, that sounds. That doesn't sound like it's against the Geneva Convention. Well, you know, when you're in a street fight, which this is in Iraq and, and in Afghanistan and all over the world, you're fighting with people that, that, that have no regard for any, any civilized rules of engagement as demonstrated by 9-11 and as demonstrated by the treatment of our prisoners and the tactics they employed on their surrender flags, et cetera, et cetera, disguising themselves as civilians and on and on and on. But when you're fighting people like that, you cannot win by fighting under a set of politically correct rules that someone is, is writing and enforcing you know, uh, thousands of miles away that's sitting behind a desk that says, oh, this just looks, this looks atrocious to what this man did. Well, you weren't there. You don't know the circumstances, the pressure, the everyday uh, deprivations that these guys are going under. They have to make split-second decisions on the spot, which are life-and-death decisions or uh, life and limb losing decisions. Well, it's like when someone put forth the notion as well that uh, we sit around and, and think of terrorists as a Western point of view, whereas that's how they attack us is by thinking completely differently than how we would expect them to, because they're just animals. Right, and, and, and my point is, and you have to fight an animal as an animal. You, you know, this this notion of you know we can't stoop to their level. Well, yeah, we better. We better stoop below their level because the only way we're going to beat them, like, like the general said a long time ago in Afghanistan, is they have to fear us more than they hate us. Which, which brings me to the, to the female topic. Uh, you know, everyone's appalled that Jessica Lynch has supposedly been raped or it's debatable or whatever. Well, I mean, you know, what did you think was going to happen when you allowed women in forward combat units? I mean, did, you know, are people that naive to think that that's not the first thing that the enemy is going to employ? Yes. To, to degrade someone? Yes. And I, and I got news for you, folks. They don't only do it to females. 
They also do it to males. It's, oh. it's, it's, it's one of their tactics. Wow, the Army had to hand out corks. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or real sharp bayonet. Yeah, there you go. All right, Rick. We'll Take care, my friend. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, happy birthday to the Marine Corps and Semper Fi. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. It's your turn. Yeah, uh... Talking that part with the little holes in it. <laughs> I was uh, calling about the, uh... Trying to call in with those tickets from Cleveland that, uh... Was being represented by those lawyers in New York. Yeah, 12-year-old tickets the city of Cleveland's trying to collect on now through lawyers in New York City and New Jersey and I uh, can't understand why they wouldn't just go to a law firm here in Cleveland and why they had to wait 12 years is beyond me. Well, probably what's happened is... See, these people here, for instance, they passed away, their license is no longer valid. They have no way to go after them by revoking their license, so they now become a bad debt. These companies come in to the different cities from different, you know, law firms and collection agencies, and they buy their bad debts from these cities. Let's say they got a million dollars in bad debts. They give them 10 to 25 cents on a dollar. Oh, I got you. And they assume, they assume the whole debt, you know. Right, okay. Well, the part that made the most sense there was that when you die, they take away your driving privileges. That's probably a good idea. The last thing we need is people with pennies on their eyes tooling down the freeway. I guess they'd have to be on cruise control, wouldn't they? With the club holding the wheel in place. Yeah, maybe I should, you know, I got this, I got this song. Let me look in my, uh, my bag of tricks and see if I, I brought it. I heard this song on the radio, and uh, I had to go, and I hope it's in here. Gee, I hope uh, I didn't forget to bring it. Well, maybe I'll look in a break, and maybe Dummy Me forgot to bring it, but uh, it was, uh, yep, Dummy Me forgot to bring it. Yeah, it's not in the bag of tricks. I'll bring it in next week. It was a song about road rage called Blow em Away. It was pretty amusing. I'll look in a break. Uh, but I'm certain it's probably sitting on my coffee table waiting, sitting there going, But Rick, you were going to take me to work. But Rick, now I just get to sit here and listen to the dog bark all night. Rick, you were going to get me out of this hell hall and take me to work. Let's double check again here in the bag of tricks. A uh, bag of potato chips. Uh, coupons. A uh, bag of... Another bag of potato chips. A David Allen Co. CD. And nope. I... Uh, God, Gilmore, you've done it again. You went and forgot. Brett, talk to me. Hey, Rick, how's it going tonight? All right. Uh, two things for you. I, I'm one of those guys who out of, out of college. I went out and moved elsewhere. I lived out in California for a few years, and uh, it's it's a whole different uh, ball game out there. When I left the state, now I don't. I, I guess you lived in Ohio all your life and haven't left ever. But uh, when I transferred. Uh, well, I mean, I have my hand stamped. I'm allowed to travel. I just didn't move anywhere. Right, right, right. But when I left California, I was I did not renew my uh, my license plate and my driver's license uh, because I moved back to Ohio. But I keep on getting these uh, letters in the mail saying uh, I owe the state of California over uh, $200 worth of uh, back pay because I did not renew my license, even though the fact that uh, they can't assume that after I left, I no longer live there. And I even wrote a letter to them after that saying, you know, I moved back to Ohio. I don't live in California anymore, so please stop sending me these letters. And yet they refused to uh, accept that, and um, I keep on getting these letters in the mail saying I owe more money and more money and more money. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous to me. What's ridiculous is that it takes 10 or 12 years for somebody, I mean, you know, if the city of Cleveland needed money, and they were on the stick... City of Cleveland would be handling this on their own, wouldn't they? They'd be going, gee, look at all these tickets we got that nobody paid. And if we can't do it, I guess we'll have to get a hold of a law firm somewhere instead of waiting for a law firm to get a hold of them from New York and say, we'll give you a pennies on the dollar. And Cleveland's going, okay, City of Cleveland's, okay, I guess we'll take 10% or 25%. Uh, 25% of something's better than 100% of nothing. Hey, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. 
Again? I guess we're going to get a new hat. Or a new mayor. We've got to do something. Or in debt up to our navels, or neck, or nostrils, or, or some other part of the anatomy. You be the judge. Uh, and nobody, and nobody had the fourth, you know, foresight and, and the thought to put forth the idea of, hey, you know, why don't we do something about this? No, no, I guess not. You're on the air. Is this Ken? Yeah, it's Ken. It's your turn, Ken. <laughs> it's not Ken, you freak. Oh, it's why Jake. Does it say Ken. It says K E, so I assumed it was Ken. This is Jake from Barkeyville, but it says you're in Ravenna. You were correct, sir. Well, I don't care where I go. You can't take me anywhere. You've been everywhere. Uh, I'd like to also wish the uh, Marine Corps a happy birthday. All right. With my proper pronunciation. Birthday. Hey, go ahead, um, please, sir. <laughs> Dude, you're, 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 you're once again just uh, cracking me up. Are we filling in any time this week? Uh... Yeah, we're filling in with Trevisano from 3 to 7, and we've got... No, I'm not filling in for anybody. We're filling, oh. we're, we're filling our airtime with regularly scheduled programming. Umberto, the master of fellatio, will not be on next Sunday at 8 so that I can bring you this program. <laughs> you're bumping him again. Pardon? You're bumping him again. Yeah, Umberto, poor Umberto. Well, you know, they, they said he was canceled because his show sucked, so I don't know. Any, anywho, uh, I heard you earlier talking about uh, the uh, hubcap lady you got there for a mayor. And I just keep trying to point out that, it, you know, I hear you in Cleveland saying it. I hear uh, the jerk in Schenectady saying it. I hear the guy. Oh, well, you're lumping me in with some jerk in Schenectady. No, no, no. Well, just because you're both talk show hosts. You're, oh, you're, I see. Well, okay. That makes, well, you're, okay. Well, then you're right. We are all jerks. Yeah. <laughs> we're all yeah. talk show hosts, you know. So what's going on is we're all getting screwed. Whether it's the, uh, would you have that show on last week and we missed you, uh, that freaking, uh, where they're stealing people's property. Oh, yeah, the uh, eminent domain issue, issue 47 in Lakewood. Yes, yes, yes. And like, I, like I'm saying, they're doing it everywhere, and it's for ridiculous things. They're doing it in Alabama um, for a Walmart. So I was just going to say, you, I, I was just going to say they're doing it to put up a Walmart. Absolutely. It, 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 isn't it wonderful? And we keep going, and the guy was saying California. Well, look at Gray Davis and the stuff you got out there. Now you got Arnold, which might be better, but you got this um, social liberal who thinks gays and all kind of crap's okay, but he's a fiscal conservative, so he wants big business to survive and uh, the workers to go to hell. I think that they could solve California's financial woes by having Arnold make a movie and donate the profits to the state. Well, since they're like uh, in the billions, I don't think it's going to work. Oh, all right. Well, I'm going to go. Thanks, Rick. All right. You're more than welcome. Well, it was just an idea. It was just a thought. Rick. Yes. Go ahead, please. You've got about a minute and a half. Okay, what I wanted to talk to you, all I hear about is Jessica Lynch. Well. And, and the fact that she's a hero. Now, there was more than one, bl uh, one woman uh, that was captured. One Anglo-Saxon Protestant, one black. And all I hear about is is, uh, is Jessica. Now, the other woman was raped, too. Now, let me say this, is that men are raped also when they are captured. Yes, I'm a yes. Vietnam veteran that lost a leg in Vietnam, and I have seen how they treat them. I believe you. I, I, I believe you. I mean, you know, all is not fair in love and war. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling. Gee, I thought we were going to leave the, no the, the show on an up note. Do your Bullwinkle impression again. Well, let's talk about lesbians or something, you know? I don't know. Let's talk about something more fun. I don't know. Anyway, Triple Doppler forecast from Betsy Kling over at TV3. Tonight clearing out mid-20s. Tomorrow, cloudy, a high of 50. Tuesday, let's look ahead, shall we? Sure. Mid-50s. Wednesday, rain, thunder, and then snow by the time the sun goes down, if the sun comes out at all. I think the, I think the sun decided to go away. 
Currently 36 degrees in Cleveland, 36. Roger Hedgecock fills in for Rush Limbaugh tomorrow. He said Roger. Here are the EIB Network. Weekdays from noon until 3 here on The Big One. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Well, I got an idea. We could probably close the program with something patriotic, couldn't we? That'd be a good idea. Seeing as Veterans Day is right around the corner. Observed tomorrow, so I guess what? Don't do any banking. Yeah, I always hated when they do that, too. I was born on Memorial Day. Memorial Day is May 30th. It's not May 27th, because that's a Monday. It's not May 29th, because that's a Friday. I hate when they do that. Now, you're taking a holiday... That's not a celebration. I mean, Memorial Day should be a somber event to remember those lost in war our wars. And you turn it into a, a picnic and a three-day weekend. Whee! We got three days off! And it waters down the effect of what it was there to begin with. So maybe I should just... Maybe I should, I'll be old-fashioned and say Happy Armistice Day. How about that? And so you can look it up in your Funkin' Wagnall and report back next week. And that way you'll know. And thanks, Nate, for, for pulling the strings, pushing the buttons and dials and all that. And thanks, Kirk, for screening the calls. And I'm Rick Gilmore, and I'll talk to you next Sunday, if not sooner. on a bayou down Louisiana way? Have you watched the cold fog drifting over San Francisco Bay? Have you heard a Bob White calling in the Carolina Pines or heard the bellow of a diesel at the Appalachia Mines? Does the call of the Niagara thrill you when you hear her waters roar? You look with awe and wonder at her Massachusetts shore where men who braved a hard new world first stepped on Plymouth's Rock. Think of them when you stroll along a New York City dock. Have you seen a snowflake drifting in the Rockies way up high? Have you seen the sun come blazing down from a bright Nevada sky? You hail to the Columbia as you rise into the sea, or how you're headed Gettysburg, our struggle to be free. Have you seen the mighty Tetons? You watched an eagle soar. Have you seen the Mississippi roll along Missouri's shore? Have you felt a chill at Michigan when on a winter's day her waters rage along the shore in thunderous display? Does the word aloha make you warm? Do you stare in disbelief when you see the surf come roaring in at Waimea Reef? From Alaska's cold to the Everglades, from the Rio Grande to Maine, my heart cries out. My pulse runs fast, the might of her domain. You ask me why I love her? I have a million reasons why. My beautiful America, beneath God's wide, wide sky. ridiculous. It's a radio show. It ain't a one-hour television spectacular. Is it working now, Gilly? Yes, Howard. All right, let's go. Good Lord, let's go. Cars slipping and skidding and kicking up rooster tails of brown snow. It's been battered by snow all morning long. This winter.